are the causes of poverty? Point number one, idleness. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 10. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. What does poverty mean? Poverty means, I mean, uh, what does idleness mean? Idleness means to avoid to work. It means to be lazy. It means to spend time doing nothing, having no purpose or basis in life. The reason why many people will never come out of poverty, despite the fact that we pray for them, curses are broken, iniquities are released from their lives, is because they are lazy, they are idle. They don't want to work with their hands. Or even when they work, they don't work hard enough. So those kind of people are going to live in a cycle of poverty. And if there is a spirit that we need to break from the African continent and even from the church and even from our nation is the spirit of laziness. People are poor because they are lazy. They want to beg from others. You know, when you look at the economies of the world that are doing so well right now, like China, people work themselves out. You know, people work themselves out. You go to Singapore, people work. Amazing. People don't work for eight hours. I was in South Korea. In South Korea, you are not even allowed to leave your office when your boss is still in the office. When they employ you, they tell you that the official working hours are eight hours. But my friend, there is an unwritten code. You cannot leave unless your boss leaves. So you find people living at eight, living at nine, living at ten. But when you look at the economies of, this, of those nations, they are growing because people work hard. Now, how many of you here want to begin a business? You want to you have your business, you want to be your own CEO. Praise the Lord. That, that's a good idea. But let me tell you, <laughs> it comes with a price. It comes with a price. If you are going to begin a business, eh, in the first one year, Actually, between one year to two years, if you're going to begin a business, that business to succeed, do you know how many hours you need to inject in? Yeah? I saw so many hands raised up. Do you know how many hours you need to inject in your business the first two years for that business to, to succeed? Business gurus, people that have made it in business, they say for the first two years, you need to inject in 18 hours if your business is going to succeed. Now, many of us are used to working how many hours? <laughs> you are used to working eight hours. And you're thinking about beginning a business that is going to have impact. Forget it. It cannot happen. Actually, people who work eight hours will rarely become millionaires. If you are on the eight-hour mark, you know, you rarely become a millionaire. Research shows that uh, uh, if you have just begun a business, you must work 18 hours a day for the, for the first two years. Entrepreneur and New York, New York Times best-selling author, Grant Cardone says, if you want to be a millionaire, you should stop working from 8 to 5. You cannot work from 8 to 5 and you expect to become a multimillionaire. You know? Self-made millionaire and Shark Tank, Damon John has a similar perspective. He says... I quote what he said. Success boils down to one thing. It 
which is hard work. Bust your butt. Get up before everybody and go to sleep after everybody. Ask your neighbor, what time do you wake up? <laughs> and what time do you go to bed? Yeah? Some of us, you wake up at 7 because your office place is 30 minutes to, you know, to drive to your place of work. And by nine, you are in bed. And then you sleep up to seven. You cannot enter that club. I can tell you. You cannot enter the club of multimillionaires. At going to be a thousand near. <laughs> Glory to God. You have to work. But when you want to work for eight hours, some of us even work for less than eight hours. Five hours. <laughs> and you think that you're going to join that club of millionaires. Child of God, forget it. It cannot happen. So, we need to break the spirit of poverty. So, in whatever vocation that you have been called, have you been called as an intercessor? Praise the Lord. Gonga Maombi. So, so it says that success uh, boils down to one thing. That is hard work. Forbes, you know the Forbes magazine. Do you know that magazine? Do you read that magazine? <laughs> Do you read the Forbes magazine? The magazine that has uh, always is reporting about billionaires and multimillionaires in American dollars. The Forbes magazine, you need to read, you know, you need to read these kind of magazines because they challenge you. Eh? When you read guys who began with nothing and they are now worth a hundred million dollars, you, you get challenged, you, you get, you know, you get stirred up, you say, you know, uh, and, and they give stories of how they made their wealth and so on. You know, Forbes magazines carried out a research, uh, a survey of how many hours billionaires work a week. And half of them said they work 60 hours a week, which is about 12 hours per day. Now, that is a billionaire. A billionaire is working how many hours? And you, a thousandaire, how many hours are you working? You're working eight. Child of God. <laughs> you cannot raise your hand and say spirit of laziness. <laughs> I refuse the spirit of laziness. Praise the Lord. Well, we don't want to be lazy. Everybody in your vocation, if you're a man of God, you should be writing books. You should be reading, reading. So, because you, your heart is the reserve here. The Lord is only going to use you according to how much you have prepared. There will never be divine a visitation without divine preparation. You're a business person. You need to research. You need to prepare. I mean, you really need to work around your business. You are employed, you know. You're working for somebody. You are employed. You should be thinking about beginning an alternative business. Not just going back home to, to sleep, eat and sit and watch. Actually, one of the, the worst idols that we are having in our houses are televisions. You know, the te those televisions, I mean, they just have junk. Things that don't even add value, you know, to your life. And people sit there and they waste their time. Because if you're going to become wealthy, you must know how to utilize your time. You know? So billionaires, half of the billionaires said that they work 12 hours a day. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 10 to 11. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall poverty come as one that traveleth. And they 
thy want as an number. Now, it is very amazing. I was trying to understand even from the Hebrew. You know, what, what was Solomon meaning when he was saying a little sleep? Not much sleep, but a little sleep. Really, everybody needs a little sleep. Isn't it? Everybody needs a little sleep. But Solomon is saying here, I mean, he's trying to explain to us how dangerous oversleeping can be. And uh, many of us here, I'm not talking about the people who are here, I'm talking about the people outside. I know you people, you are very hardworking, praise the Lord. Many people love to sleep. <laughs> they love the comfort of the bed. That's why many people don't even go for keshas. Brothers and sisters, do you know what it means for you to spend eight hours in a kesha? The kind of power that you generate that will help in your life. And you decide every day of your life to sleep. Every Friday you're sleeping. Because you have to understand something. That for you and me to be able to make it, we need supernatural power. We need supernatural power. And supernatural power is in different measures. It is supernatural power that moves things. It is supernatural power that breaks opposition that is coming against you. And this supernatural power must be generated. Because you have to know that we are operating in a different kingdom. Huh? We are not operating. Let me tell you. Research has proved most of the people that have succeeded even in the world, they are connected to a certain demonic power. Nobody just succeeds based on their wisdom and intelligence here. No. You must be connected either to an altar of ancestors and you are servicing it. Or to an altar of Freemasonry. The people that have the greatest amount of resources in Nairobi, you want it or not, they are Freemasons. They are not Christians. They are Freemasons. It is the Freemasons who own the property of this city. They are connected to the Freemasonic altar. They worship the Queen of Heaven. They give sacrifices. Every Thursday, you will see them up there going to worship their God and doing a lot of funny things. You cannot make it without supernatural power. Huh? For you, you don't want to activate your altar. You want to oversleep. Where are you going to get, where are you going to get supernatural power to make things to move? That's why you begin a business. Listen. Demonic altars always create a hostile environment for the children of God. Just like this altar, the presence of this altar and other altars where prayer is taking place. They also create a hostile environment for people who are consulting demonic powers to do business. Huh? So for you, you want to sleep every Friday and enjoy your bed and then wake up to God. You can't. You can't excel. Child of God, whatever church you want to, please go for cashers. Go and generate supernatural power. And then, after you've generated supernatural power, go and work. Because you see, the missing link with the church is this. We generate the power, but we don't know how to use it. You know, when Dr. Pat Francis came, she demonstrated to us very well. You remember the Kail pillars? You know, she demonstrated very well. The, the first Kail pillar was what? It was worship. She said, but the, the church in Africa is stuck in the pillar of worship. And yet we must move from worship to what? To wisdom. And from wisdom to power. We need supernatural power. That's the beginning. 
But after we have acquired it, let's take it to our businesses. Let's go and lay our hands. Let's go and raise altars in the places where we are working so that we can draw that supernatural power to help us. So, we are going to come against the spirit of laziness. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 13. Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 15. Slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep, and the idle soul shall suffer hunger. Bishop Odepo says, he engages himself in 18 hours of productive work every day of his life. He works for 18 hours. But you can see where he is and how much God is using him to influence the world. I quote one of his sayings. He says, hard work does not wear people out. It's the wrong work that wears them out. He says, if you sleep eight hours a day at the age of 100, you would have slept 25 years of your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Raise your hand and say, laziness, I'm divorcing you today. <laughs> Hallelujah. We don't want to be lazy. We want to be diligent. Reading the word of God. Diligent in prayer. And then when we go to work, we go diligent. And that's the reason, let me tell you. I have taught many countries about the power of the 40-day prayer and fasting. But I can tell you that some of the most amazing results that I have seen, I've seen results here in Africa, but some of the most amazing results I've seen, I saw them in Asia. Because business people, they got the idea, they fasted, and after fasting and prayer, they took that power to their businesses. They went to work. Their prayer and fasting did not mean now they should not work hard. No. They got the supernatural power and then they took it to their place of work. So, this thing of prayer and fasting, it, it works. It gives us supernatural power. But after you have received the supernatural, you have to go and work. Eh, banang. Tell your neighbor, go and work. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Don't sleep and say, Money. You know, many times we children of God are saying the wealth of the wicked is going to be given to the righteous. Brothers and sisters, I've seen many miracles in the years that I've been in the kingdom of God. But one miracle I have never seen. I've never seen money flying. Glory to God. I've never seen money flying and entering people's, you know, people's homes and saying, no. Wealth transfer is going to come to people that are doing something. Amen. There must be something that you are doing. And through that, wealth is going to come to you. Are we together? Proverbs 19. Okay. Uh, secondly, I, I need to finish. Lack of creativity. Lack of creativity. Many people are poor because of lack of creativity. Creativity is the laboratory of your spirit. And it is loaded with designs and inventions. Our God is a creator. When he created us, he created us also to be creative. There are ideas. There are inventions. There are designs that are locked up in your spirit. But you see, many times, 
We are not creative. We like doing things the same way. You see somebody is doing, because he's going to Uganda to bring shoes from Uganda, you also want to go to Uganda and bring shoes. You know? You want to do the same thing. And yet there are so many ideas that God has put inside of your life that can bring you a lot of money. Myers Monroe used to say that an idea can in a short time make you a multimillionaire than hard work. That's why you see men like Zuckerberg. It was creativity. The founder of Facebook. It was the power of creativity. You know? He just got an idea and he implemented that idea and his life has never remained the same. Bill Gates got an idea on Microsoft and his life has never remained the same. I mean, you need an idea. I pray tonight, even as we are praying, that you will become creative. Amen. May the Lord cause your mind to become creative. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because many of us, our minds are static. Creativity is the converging point where various currents of the spirit, like wisdom, understanding, and communion meet. You know, creativity, I was listening to some music uh, at home, of some musicians who have sung songs, and you know, you listen to those songs and you realize that this person has paid a price until the Lord allowed them to enter a certain space. I mean, not only the words, but even the tones. I, I mean, you, you listen and you, you, you know, it is beyond human understanding. You know, there is a space where we can access the power of creativity. We need creativity. Wajameni. I told you the Lord spoke to me when I was in the plane. I was coming back from Asia. And he told me that he hates monotony. He told me, look around the plane. Is there anybody that looks like another? All people are different. Different noses. Different eyes. Different faces. Different heights. You know? I don't like monotony. The Lord told me he doesn't like monotony. God likes, that's why he created different plants, different animals, different flies, different birds, different people groups, different colors, you know, because he doesn't like monotony. And he has put that same power of creativity inside of us. Huh? You're thinking of beginning a, a, a restaurant. Don't begin these restaurants which are selling chips and chicken. Everybody is beginning that. Where one's a restaurant, Yakuza, African food, cassava, potatoes, and write on that, healthy foods, and campaign. At first, Nairobians may not respond, but with the time, Watashika Moto. I mean, think about something that is not there. Like in Sasan, it is copycats. And even what you're copying, you don't even have the natural ability to be able to sustain it. So, we need creativity to be activated tonight in the name of Jesus. Creativity is so important because wealth is created. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. But remember the Lord your God, for it is ye which gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. Wealth is produced. Wealth is made. You know? So creativity is important. If you're going to make wealth, you need to be creative. Wealth is created by subduing the earth. There is no way that you're going to subdue the earth without creativity. Point number four, generational issues.
Genesis 3, 17 to 18. And to Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten the tree of which I commanded this, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cast it the ground for thy sake, in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall bring it forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. You know that the grounds where we are operating are very hostile. So we need to use spiritual laws. The Bible says in Galatians 3.13 that Christ became a curse for us. You know because he was hung on a tree. So there is no curse that can be able to stand against you. No curse upon the land that can stop you. But as I usually say, that is on a positional dimension. You must enforce it in your life. Many people are in poverty because of generational cycles. You know, I've said this before and I say it again. That there are four major things which are very dangerous. And on my observation in praying for people deliverance, People who come from those four major areas experience about four, I think, three major challenges. One, a generation where there is so much witchcraft. Now, somebody can say, what about the people in the world? They practice a lot of witchcraft, like the Freemasonry and so on. Why is it that they prosper? Because they are operating under a different covenant. For you, you are in a different covenant. So you are either holy into this covenant for, for it to work for you, or it will not work for you. So if you come from a generation of witchcraft, sorcery, power, idol worship, you come from a, gener a, a, a family background where there was uh, a sexual perversions, immorality, and all those uh, polygamy, fornication, adultery, it was so much in your family. Th those kind of forces don't open up doors in your family. They don't open up doors. They open up gates. Because those are not sins, those are abominations. Uh, abomination is something that is beyond a sin. God cannot even be able to stand it. You know? Thirdly, families where there is uh, the, the issue of bloodshed. You know? Uh, so you find that those people who come from those kind of family backgrounds, they also have three major challenges. Challenge number one, it is not easy for them to get born again because of their powerful covenants that are speaking over their lives. And when they get born again, it is not easy for them to be committed to the Lord. You know, somebody gets born again, but they are just vugu vugu. They are lukewarm. They are not committed. They are not committed. I know communities even in this nation, when they get born again, they are going to need thorough deliverance to get born again because of certain demonic covenants that are speaking over their lives. And secondly, they have challenges, financial cycles, poverty, debts. You know, they cannot just take off. And thirdly, there are issues with marriage. 